Thank you. Thank you, and welcome to Community Over Code Asia 2023. Let's see if this works. Okay, that didn't work. On. Do I need to point this somewhere? There it is. Okay, we're going backwards then today. Okay. It's a great honor for me to be here and talk to you all today about Apache Software Foundation past and future. I don't know about the present. The present is right here, right now, and I think you all know what's going on. So I'll talk a little bit about the past and then try to focus on what we will do in the future. So. Some of you who don't know me, I, uh, I joined Apache in 2005 when Sun donated a project called JDO. Anybody ever hear of JDO? Anyway, yeah, three of us. <laughs> anyway, um, that was my first experience joining a community of developers outside of the very small environment that I used to work in. Um, I was uh, then elected to the board in 2019, and I currently serve as, as a director on the board of directors, and um, does anyone know what an ICLA is? Um, I'm the guy who filed most of those ICLAs over the past 10 years or so, but enough about me. We'll talk about some more interesting things. Um, the goals of the ASF are software as a public good. Public good has a very specific technical meaning. It means that no one person or one organization takes advantage of the software that we produce. It's open for everybody to use, and it's free. No money, no money ever. We also do this by having a safe environment for lots of different organizations, lots of different folks. Contributors, people who write code or contribute their time and energy, they get protected by a legal shield. That means that nobody is going to sue you. Nobody's going to put you in jail for something that you do if you follow the rules that we have. And the rules are very simple, let's be honest. Distributors, people who take the software that we write, they can distribute it very freely with a very permissive license. That means they can do lots of different things. They can charge money for it. They won't be penalized. It's still all free. Users are protected. It's a safe environment for users who can contribute, they can discuss things, and there's a code of conduct so that if anybody does something mean or vicious or unkind or rude or illegal, that's not allowed. And those people will be, will be brought to justice. And another goal is to build a community of like-minded individuals all over the world. We have no geographic boundaries. So the ASF, in order to achieve those goals, we have a few things that we focus on, free and open and non-hierarchical. That's kind of a hard English language. I'm not sure that it translates well. But we have software that's free to distribute. It's free to modify. You don't have to just send out exactly what you get. You can send out modifications of your own. You can put your own special license on it. You can restrict the license. Uh, for your particular users, but the software that we distribute is still under a free license, but you can relicense it to whatever you want. And it's free to join. We don't have any artificial barriers to people contributing or people using, either one. We do this via openness. We are open to the community. Open source, part of that is the code, you can write code, testing, you can write test cases, you can run the tests. Nobody's going to say, you can't do that. 
So you can do that and file bug reports. We value people saying, your stuff doesn't work. Well, how does it not work? Tell us how it doesn't work and we'll try to fix it. So those are values that we have. So we also have open discussions, open forums, and this is probably the most important thing, is that if you join a community in Apache, and it's easy to find a community, you can search on the internet, you can find all the projects, there are over 200 projects in Apache, you can find a project that you're interested in, and you can sort of look and see what other people are saying, then you can add comments of your own, and you can join the community and, and build the community starting with yourself and then including others. So all the discussion about issues, that is bug reports, feature requests, releases, those are all discussed in the open. There's no behind the scenes or there should not be any behind the scenes uh, discussions. Everything should happen in the open. And then finally the open governance, that is that, that the project is governed, all the projects have their own little community of governors, if you will, and the government is done in the open on communication channels. So I've talked a lot about communication channels and that's really one of the key aspects of having a community, is being able to communicate with other people. The non-hierarchical, uh, uh, committees means that the, in, a, in a, uh, an organization, a commercial organization, you have your, your programmers and your testers and your documentation, then they have a manager and the manager has a manager and the manager has a manager and then you get to somebody who says, do that and people do it. Apache is very different. It's all very small local governance. So there's a, there is a board, but there are a lot of communities that take not direction directly, but oversight by the board. So that's an important thing. There's no report to report to report to. There's none of that. So how have we done over the past several years? If you look at this map, it's a little tough to tell what exactly is going on, but um, there are two major areas where contributors hang out. One is in China, the other one is in the U.S., and there's a, a large community in, in uh, the uh, Asia, in India as well. And if you look at the, um, the growth of projects, ASF projects in China, coming from China. Um, Kailin was in 2014. Some of you may know the Kailin project. But each year, we have more and more projects coming in to the ASF from, from the Chinese community, from one to six projects pretty much every year. And then we have a large number of people in China who contribute to other projects there's also a thing that you can get involved locally. There's an Apache local chapter, ALC, and we now have three of them, uh, Beijing, Sichuan, and I hope I'm pronouncing Xi'an, Xi, Xi'an. Anyway, um, <laughs> forgive my Chinese is very bad. <clears throat> so we now have 24 top level projects that started out in China were brought in through the incubation, and now they're top-level projects with their own governance model. And 24 of them is a fairly large number, but, but wait, there's more. There are eight, nine projects that are currently in the incubator, which means that they are on their way to becoming top-level projects. And you can read them. Maybe you're involved with those things already, or maybe you'd like to be. So this is just a, a little picture of uh, the community that um, happens to have my face in them um, from 2017, sorry, 2018, 2017, 2018, and then 
there was a 2019 conference in the Tsinghua University. That was uh, an exciting way to, to meet a lot of people. Now, something happened in 2020, 2021, 2022. I don't know what it was, but there were no conferences that we could uh, take part in over those few years. But hopefully this will start the beginning and we can look forward to the future where we have more conferences. These are three of the conferences, 21, 2, and some of those are virtual. So the Community Over Code is now a, uh, a fully in-person. In um, I think somebody called it an offline conference, but I like to think of it as in-person in -person conference. These are the Apache local communities that we have established in 2020. Um, in Beijing 2021 in Sichuan, and 2023 now in Xi'an. So we also look for not just people who say, I want to join, I want people who would like to join, but don't have the means, don't have the money, don't have the resources, they have the talent, they're able to do this, but they just don't have the resources to do it, and for that, we have special programs. We have uh, partnered with a company called Outreachy. Outreachy um, sponsors people who want to become more involved in technology and they just need a little bit of help. And so Apache provides mentors, that is people who volunteer to work with these people and then um, Outreachy provides a little bit of financial assistance for them. In addition, Google, um, I guess some of you are familiar with Google. Um, you can't get to it on the internet, but it's, it's there, trust me on that. Um, there's a program called Google Summer of Code, and that's very much like um, Apache provides mentors, that is people who work with the underrepresented folks, and Google provides some funding, again, very much like if you need, if you can't um, find a job in technology but you're talented, you can work with an Apache project and they will give you a little bit of, of money to help you do that. And then finally, there's um, the Travel Assistance Committee that um, these conferences that we have all over the world. Sometimes people want to speak at the conferences. Somebody, sometimes there are community members who just can't afford to make the trip from Beijing to Halifax or from Beijing to Berlin or, you know, travel is expensive. And so that we have a travel assistance committee that can help people who want to participate so we've talked a lot about um, communications. And when Apache was founded in 1999, there was pretty much two vehicles of communication on the internet. One is SMS, which is direct phone-to-phone -phone communications. That isn't really great for communicating in a, in a community. That's good for me talking to you, you talking to but it's not really good for communities. What did work was a little thing called email that had been developed 20 years earlier, 1971. And that seemed to be a good way of communicating among the, the folks who participate in, in Apache. So after the founding of Apache, Facebook, Twitter, oh, X, formerly known as Twitter. Um, there's WhatsApp and Instagram and Zoom and WeChat. Anybody here use WeChat? Like everybody uses WeChat, yeah. Yeah, so WeChat is good too, but um, what we're looking for is communications that are public, so you don't have to be a member of a group to see what's going on. So it's public, searchable. You can look up, you can go to the uh, search, search page on, on uh, our website, the ASF website, and 
you can look for what was Craig Russell doing with JDO in 2005, and you'll find all the communications that I had something to do with back in 2005. So a reminder, that's 18 years ago. Those archives are still there, and they're permanent. Nobody is going to get rid of them. So it's very important for us to remember that part of communication is open, public, searchable, archived, and always there, permanent. So as of today, you look at all those different ways of communicating, and there's one that is still very viable, and I do not believe it's going away anytime soon, even with all these other channels of communication. That is the one. And it was good enough for us 20 years ago. It's still good enough for us today. And so I think the future, until somebody comes up with something better, the future is going to be email. Sad to say, I mean, email makes me sound like an old guy, but um, email is old, I'm older, I make no, no mistake about that, um, but it's still very viable. Now we'll pivot a little bit to source code, not nearly as interesting as communications, but um, you look at how you manage source code. And there's been a lot of changes since SCCS, which I don't even remember SCCS, but it was there. Um, RCS and CVS, those are, are ways of, of managing electronically. I won't even tell you about how you managed source control with punch cards, because that's pretty boring. But the electronic version of these things, CVS is what we were using um, when we started started with Apache, but then in 2000, Subversion, SVN. That allowed you to have branches, allowed you to roll back changes. Very, very nice source control. And in fact, in 2010, Subversion was very so very popular in, in Apache that the folks who, who were writing SVN decided they would become an Apache project. So in 2010, this is now 13 years ago, it became a top-level project in, a, in Apache. And the nice thing about SVN is that still, even after all these years, it integrates very, very nicely with email for communication. You can discuss patches, anything made in a repository, any changes made are recorded immediately in, in the uh, email threads. So any change that you ever make to any SVN Apache repository is, again, public, searchable, and permanent. Of course, now time moved on, and we have a thing called Git. Um, most of the people in this room say SVN, but Git, yeah, that's really good. So Git has built an entire community around the concept of source control and they continued to make improvements. Git itself came by in 2005, so that was after, after Apache was formed. Um, GitHub came along in 2008. GitHub Enterprise, then in 2013, choose a license, and now you can, Git will remind you if you have not put a license on your code. Here, here's a large number of licenses you can choose, and. I will tell you that the Apache license version 2.0 is still one of the most popular licenses that you can choose in Git, GitHub. And so now we have, due to popular demand from um, ASF projects, top level projects, the, uh, the foundation now fully supports GitHub and has its own mirror system that is proprietary, owned by the foundation, and mirrors exactly Git repositories. So even if Git, GitHub, went away tomorrow, we would still, as a foundation, have all the source code, all the source control, all the history from when we migrated a project into it. So don't worry about losing your code. 
even if it's in SVN, even if it's in, in, uh, in Git, um, the ASF has a permanent repository for it. So the, uh, the nice thing about Git, GitHub, is that it's a nice way of communicating, and it also integrates very nicely with, wait for it, email. So all the discussion that goes on in GitHub is immediately transformed into email, so it's searchable, archived, and, and public. So the foundation operates within some legal boundaries. As a foundation, as a U.S. nonprofit corporation, and we're a Delaware corporation, in case anybody asks you, we're incorporated in Delaware, um, we are a charity, which means that we don't make money. We hope not to lose too much money, but we don't make money. We give things away for free. Sponsors are what keeps the, the uh, foundation going. But we do license. So we have licenses that are very free, very permissive. You, can, um, you don't have to sign anything to use Apache software. There's no si signing required. You can just take it, take it, use it. You don't even have to let anybody know you're using it unless you choose to distribute, and then you have to say, oh, by the way, this software came from the ASF. That is a that's pretty much the only requirement, is that you acknowledge where the code came from. The ASF has no patents, so I won't even mention that anymore, but we don't do that. If you contribute something, the contributor owns the intellectual property along with any patents that go along with that. Now, you have to grant a patent license to Apache so that we can avoid patent disputes, but you own the code as a contributor. Now, what's coming in more recently, this is where the, the, uh, the government is starting to stick its nose into our business. We have privacy laws. They're in many countries. They're in the EU. They're in, in, uh, in California. The rest of the US, nah, not so much, but um, some states have very strict privacy laws. And so we have controls over um, this email thing. You do need to uh, abide by the privacy rules. So if you say, well, I accidentally exposed some of my private information, well, there's things that, that uh, laws control that. If you visit our website, there are privacy laws that control how much information of yours we are allowed to collect and then use. So there are some regulations. But there's also security to consider. Security is, has suddenly become a, a very big deal. Um, we have for a long time had a protocol to handle security. And that starts with the VP, Vice President of Security, and there are the set of, of things that a project needs to do to obey the security protocols. So if some black hat, white hat, some other color hat, a hacker, finds a vulnerability um, in, the, in the code, that will be reported, and everybody who's involved in the security um, protocols is going to know that that um, has been reported, and the VP is responsible for contacting the, the project, making sure that the project understands and the project then has to take action to address that vulnerability. Now, during the time while that vulnerability is out there, um, you need to keep it secret. So this is one area where the open to all public searchable does not apply. Vulnerabilities in the software are kept secret until the project has had a chance to figure out why what's the impact, what can be fixed, and how to address it. And then once a release is made, then that vulnerability is known, and that's the, the public part. Once, once there's a public patch available, then everybody can know about it. Now what that means is that 
projects that depend on Apache software that has a vulnerability, they really have an obligation to upgrade to the ver version that fixes that vulnerability. And so that's really something that we have no control over. Others have to manage that. And that's something that um, governments have started to take a look at, a serious look at. The U.S. National Cyber Security Strategy is a public document in the U.S. that says what the U.S. government is going to do about security. There's executive orders, there's a, a number of, of legislation that's, that's working its way through. In the EU, there's a thing called the Cyber Resilience Act, the CRA, and that has some serious implications. So I won't spend too much time on it now, but it's something that is worth looking into so that each of you has at least a little understanding about the implications because what they've done is they said, if you s distribute software, you are responsible for making sure that a certain set of rules are followed to guarantee security. And the problem is that those rules require testing, they require exhaustive understanding of the usage of the software, which frankly, a project doesn't necessarily know all the usage that the software is going to be used in. That's up to the people who are selling the software into the, into the market. So the problem is that if they define um, uh, the ASF software as subject to these rules, it's basically very difficult for any project to take advantage of or to, to, uh, to build these rules in. So there's explicit uh, carve-outs, explicit exceptions in the CRA for open source projects. But the problem is how you define open source. And right now they're doing a very bad job of defining open source. So that's something that um, we'll, we'll be discussing later in, a, in the panel, but um, there are some serious implications there. So where are we going from this? from this point here. New projects continue to arrive every year, and there are currently 25 projects in incubation. That means that they're on their way to becoming full-fledged Apache uh, projects. Um, projects release software every week. Um, I should probably change this to every day some project in Apache is releasing some kind of software, almost every day something is, is coming out. And governments recognize that the contribution, contributions to growth from ASF are significant. So government understands that the market value of the ASF software is somewhere around, I'll take a, a wild stab at this, 140 billion yuan. That's a pretty big number. And the problem is that governments are about to step on it by over-regulating it. So keep in mind that that's what, what uh, but in the meantime, the, the foundation is committed to building communities around the world, including here in, in, uh, in China. And we hope to do more and more every year, every week, every day. And with that, I thank you for your attention.